Welcome back to our channel, Coral Jacks. In this video, we'll be visiting the iconic yet somewhat mysterious Culver Hole. Built into the cliffs of Overton Mare, this strange structure could simply be an extravagant dovecot, but its history is vague and shrouded in tales of forts and smuggling. Situated in Gower, South Wales, the walk to Culver Hole is stunning, passing beautiful beaches, rugged cliffs, yeah, I said 50 yards from that there should be a path. And an impressive salt house. It's claimed that in the 16th century, John Lucas fortified both the salt house and Culver Hole before connecting the two via an underground passage. From this stronghold, and aided by a group of lawless men, he profited from piracy and smuggling. <laughs> but is this tale of a secret tunnel true? Or is it twisted from an older story, linking Culver Hole to a medieval stronghold or castle? Wow, it's... <laughs> yeah, okay, you should have expected that. As you probably know, Gower is an area of outstanding natural beauty, with some of the finest beaches in the UK. But more important to us are the numerous sites of historical interest, from Paleolithic caves and skeletons, to Neolithic and Bronze Age monuments from Iron Age fortifications and Roman remains, to Norman castles, and of course, the 16th century structures we'll visit today. Gower is an incredibly important place for the study of our past, and we've got new videos of the nearby Neolithic sites coming soon. So please do subscribe to get notified of those when they're published. To access this breathtaking site, you can park at the Port Ainon Beach car park. Just 15 miles from the hustle and bustle of Swansea city centre, Port Ainon is a relative sanctuary of peace. But from the 15th to 19th century, smuggling and piracy around the Welsh coastline was rife, and Gower has a bounty of legends surrounding this controversial activity, suggesting it was a hotbed for smugglers. You can park at the Port Ainon beach car park and follow the public footpath through the adjacent campsite. You'll pass the youth hostel, and then cross another camping field before reaching the Salt House. According to local folklore, this building was fortified by legendary Gower pirate John Lucas in order to further his unlawful activities. They also say that he had a secret tunnel that was used to move illegal contraband, connecting it to the nearby Culver Hole. A tunnel, they say, that was big enough for a horse to travel through. Is this the Salt House? This supposed history also claims that seven generations later, Another John Lucas found a rich vein of a mineral used in paints and exported it from his base at the Salt House, but shortly after his death, the building was ruined in a storm. However, according to the National Trust, this interesting history was later shown to be a fabrication, written by the Reverend Dr. J. H. Spry during the 1830s in connection with a family lawsuit over the ownership of the property. The site has been eroded steadily which led to excavations undertaken in the 1980s and 90s. It appears to have been originally built in the mid-16th century as a site of salt production. A quote from the National Trust Heritage Record is as follows. The main building we see today was used for occupation and storage, whilst three large chambers on the beach were used for salt production. The seawater would enter the beach chambers at high tide, where it would be stored in a reservoir. The water would be pumped into large iron pans and slowly heated and evaporated. As the salt formed, it would be scooped off and stored in the northern part of the main building to dry. It would seem Welsh salt houses of the later 16th century were amongst the most advanced of their day. From the salt house, there's a path that runs along the top of the beach, through the dunes and up to a granite standing stone erected by the Gower Society. Yeah, I said 50 yards from that there should be a path. West, 50 yards west. From the memorial stone, you head west for 50 yards before coming to a steep, narrow, but well-trodden path. I shouldn't film and walk, though I'm not good at that. Be right back. If you're afraid of heights, this part may look a little scary, but there were lots of people of all ages and abilities out exploring here today, so don't be too scared off by how it looks on our cameras. However, the path does continue down to a narrow section on the sharp, rocky coastline. Ah yes, we got this. Oh, that's very spiky, yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, if this doesn't look like your cup of tea, you can set off a little bit earlier and walk the long way round from the beach by the salt house. 
Wow. Looks like we'll be able to get in. Despite the exciting legends of smugglers or pirates using Culver Hole to hide their booty, this structure is believed to have been built in medieval times as a shelter for semi-domesticated pigeons. A clue in the name is that the word culver derives from the Old English word culfer, meaning pigeon. Rather than a method of ferrying secret messages between pirates or privateers, the pigeons were likely an important source of food, providing meat and fresh eggs. I think it's more impressive in person. It feels quite epic. But it's no wonder that imaginations have run rampant. Despite elaborate dovecots being relatively commonplace in the 16th century, this is an unusual and fairly unique construction. Oh, it's kind of creepy, though. <laughs> where a natural cave has been closed off by a high wall with large windows. Oh, my God, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, okay, you should have expected that. Yeah. I'm gonna get my phone. Oh my god, it's cool. It, yeah, we were lucky, some of the pictures I see, all these vaulters from the entrance. Yeah. Can't get in. God, it's definitely bigger than I imagined from the video. But although at first it may seem strange, upon further inspection, the design is very practical. The wall is three and a half metres thick at its base. Creepy accommodating a platform and a stairway. But yeah, there's much, much larger usable space than you first assume. And with the fact it looks like there's a ledge and steps up there, it looks like, anyway, steps that go up to each level. At the top of each stretch of stairs, the wall narrows, allowing room for the next set of stairs to be functional. I'm not sure if you can see it clearly in our video, but there's also this diagram that's available from Kovlin showing the staircases and platforms. With roughly 30 tiers of small alcoves, suitable for nesting birds, and a selection of windows for avian access, and stairs to facilitate the collecting of eggs, it seems this must have been a very functional building. Could have been a dovecot. <laughs> Could have had an additional layer. When you look up there, it looks like there's steps in between the levels. Yeah. And they've built them like the wall down here is three or four times thicker than the wall as it goes up. And so you could stand on those levels and then walk up the steps in between them, theoretically. It has also been suggested that Culver Hole was part of a medieval stronghold or may have been connected to a castle. The castle of Port Ainon is mentioned in 1396, which is around the right period, but its location is unknown. The idea that Culver Hole was a fortified portion of this castle assumes a lost upper access, and looking up to the top of the cliff, the possibility of a tunnel or a concealed stairway long since eroded does seem plausible. This could have been an invaluable resource during times of conflict or siege. If the Culver Hole structure was related to a clifftop stronghold, a very good precedent exists in the cave of Carrig Kenning Castle where a rock-faced structure links the castle to a water system beneath it, also secondarily used as a dovecot. However, others suggest that Carrig Kennan merely inspired the fanciful connection, rather than actually being a precedent of construction style. There have been excavations at Culver Hole, and between 1923 to 1932, it produced undated human remains of up to 41 individuals, a middle to late Bronze Age pottery assemblage, Roman coins and brooches, and an early medieval brooch. But probably the most impressive find was a Romano-Celtic bronze figurine dating from the late Iron Age to the early Roman period. Nearby on Port Ainon Beach, footprints of children and adults were also found in 2014. At first they were thought to be Bronze Age, but radiocarbon dating at Cardiff University has revealed that they are 7,000 years old and could belong to a Mesolithic hunting party as they're accompanied by animal tracks perhaps deer and wild boar moving in the same direction. Post Ice Age human footprints are pretty rare in the UK, and the majority of them are in Wales. On this trip, we also visited the Sween Howes Monument on Rosilly Down, Mine Ketty at Kevin Bryn, and attempted to make it into a couple of caves, including Paviland. Coral's currently researching the scripts, and I'm about to get on with editing the footage, so please do subscribe to the channel to get notified when they go up. We hope you enjoyed this video, 
and perhaps encourage you to visit Gower yourselves, if you haven't already. We'll be back in the area soon to cover all the other sites that we've missed, so if you know anywhere we should explore, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.